<laughs> I, I do, to do it on a grand scale is even better. When I won Miss Florida in 1995, <coughs> I did a Norman Des Norma Desmond number, and we actually had a car on stage. <laughs> Uh, the Feather Fan number was for Miss Florida Pageant in 1996. Mm -hmm. I had ordered those feathers from New York, <laughs> and, and we made them ourselves. Oh. And my, my favorite is doing a character. I, I love being able to convey a character so that the, the audience goes wild. <laughs> Marilyn is, is a character that you can lose yourself in. I love her movies. I, I love old movies. Old Hollywood glamour and air tape, that's my style. <laughs> <coughs> From age three, I, I didn't feel like my brothers. I felt different. I liked dolls. And I, and I always wore my mom's clothes and the high heels, the same thing a little girl does. And, and my dad didn't approve. And, and he said, once you start elementary school, this has to stop. Mm -hmm. So, when I started elementary school, I started coming <coughs> down to dinner, dressed like I was from Greece, you know, with a little white skirt or, <laughs> or Scottish with a kilt. <laughs> and, and he'd go, it's still a dress. <laughs> so, he started to shave my head every time he caught me dressed like a girl. And we went to a private school. So the classes were very small, but the kids still called me sissy and fag and all that kind of stuff. I, I guess I had thick skin. You, you just get used to it. How I found out about people like me was I used to babysit. And I, I found the, the book, Everything You've Always Wanted to Know About Sex But We're Afraid to Ask. <laughs> and it had a chapter on transsexualism, and when I read it, I was like, oh my God, that is describing me. <laughs> it talked about hormones and all that. I must have been about 12, 13, and I knew right then and there, that was me. My friends and I would go to the town square, we'd turn the radio on on the car, and we'd drag, we do drag out on the steps of the courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> or we'd go over to their houses and dance around, but they lived as boys. And they would tell me, why can't you just take that stuff off during the daytime? <laughs> why do you have to stay in it 24-7? And, and I would say, it's just the way I feel. Hmm. And then strangely enough, both of them ended, ended up living as women later on in life. <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, there was really nobody like me. I got expelled from high school because the principal said, you cannot come to school with mascara on. <laughs> and, and I had bleached my hair blonde, and, and my lips would be stained from the night before. He thought I was coming into school in drag, but I, it was just that my makeup was left over from the night before. So <laughs> <laughs> finally, he said, you've got to go. I, I started doing drag in 1973 wow. in my hometown, Huntsville, Alabama. Oh. <laughs> now, this was a few years after Stonewall, and gay people were considered mentally ill at the time, so <laughs> the, there was a gay bar that, that did shows and everything, but mainly they wanted the drag kept in the club. You were supposed to come into the club as a man and leave as a man. In, in Huntsville, there was a law that you had to wear three pieces of men's clothing underneath your clothes or they would arrest you. The police would stop you, get you out of the car, oh my. and you would have to show them. But uh, I had started living as a woman at 15 and I, I had almost got arrested several times. But finally, I asked this policeman, <coughs> what legally can I wear to keep me from being arrested? And he said, just wear socks up here and boys' underwear, and if they check, that will constitute three pieces. A and you had to pull up your outfit and show them. That, that's how it was. I, I moved to Atlanta in 1974. It was less restrictive. <laughs> <laughs> but, but even there, most of the entertainers lived as boys. And they would always tell me that if you lived as a woman, it, it was because you were a prostitute. If you were an entertainer, you lived as a boy. That was the thinking. 
but I, I just didn't believe all that. Mm -hmm. I never even had full sex until I was 17 or 18 because I, I didn't know what to do and, and because I lived as a woman and so who's going to want somebody in between? Mm -hmm. I thought it would be so confusing to somebody else. So I just kind of, I was just kind of living my life with hot pants and platforms <laughs> <laughs> and going to the clubs. Oh, I thought I was hot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think after a while, though, when people, they come up and they say you're attractive and all that, what are they getting at? Because when you look in the mirror, even with silicone and everything, you look in your eyes and you see your soul. Well, I always saw a girl in the mirror, but when you look in your eyes, you see something that's not a man or a woman. Hmm. Your soul is genderless. Anywho, <laughs> I joined a show called French Dressing and, and we traveled to Canada and the United States uh, doing female impersonation. And we played straight dinner theaters and, and supper clubs back in the 70s. Dinner theaters were a huge rage. As soon as we finished one city, we fly to the next. Every place we went, we sold out because it was such a novelty. And, we all did celebrity impersonations. I did Marilyn, Marlena Dietrich, and Dolly Parton. Ah. <laughs> and we had a choreographer and wonderful sets. In one number, there was a huge staircase I got to come down. Oh, for Marlena, I came out of the ceiling with smoke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for Marilyn, I came out of the floor <laughs> in the show. You had to live as men and quit taking hormones and all that. And I tried it for like a year, <laughs> year and a half. And I just couldn't do it. <laughs> y you know, I, I felt I wasn't being my authentic self. Mm -hmm. So I started back on hormones and I left the show. In 1980, I was working at a club in LA called the Queen Mary. <coughs> Only three of us were living as women. So we were like the novelty in the show. They started calling us Charlie's Angels. <laughs> so they had a brunette and a redhead and a blonde. <coughs> but uh, the, the other people in the show, they lived as men. Well, we, we all got along. We, we were like a family. And some TV producers came in and saw the show and were impressed and decided that we would be the very first pre-operative <coughs> transsexuals to ever go on national television. Ooh. Oh, well, because back then it wasn't really as common as, as it is now. You know, mostly people had their operations or, or their sexual reassignment surgery and, and would just disappear <coughs> back into society. Mm. So there was no body that really lived as women taking hormones, but uh, pre-operative. That was in the national spotlight. So that's how we came to be interviewed by Gary Collins. <coughs> Please welcome Amanda Winters, Heather Fontaine, and Shirley Luttrell. Please, come on. Okay, just a little bit.